Hello, uh, hello, Capacity Crowd. Yay! Oh, my goodness me. Welcome to Life's a Pitch TV. I'm Mark Murphy. Whether you're watching on YouTube or listening on podcast, you are most welcome to the latest edition of the show. Big shout out to our sponsors, our main sponsor, DPS Tech. Also to our other sponsors, All About Hearing, marketing company, Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Hither Design, The Hudson Group, Sound 4 Pro Audio, Venue 16, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, The Dove in Ipswich, the sponsor of The Sofa is DPS Tech, and we have another sponsor. Hello to everybody from Ashford Wright Limited, who have just signed on the dotted line with us and deserves a round of applause. All of our sponsors who help us get on air every week. Let me introduce you to the team. I'm sitting next to someone very special. I'll introduce in a moment or two. But here we have Terry Butcher. Hooray! Russell Osman. Ed Sheeran instead of Phil Hamm this week. <laughs> He's going to be watching this from his sick bed, you know. Oh, poor Phil. Who's that, is that well. Ed Sheeran? Is he ill? Is he Ill or no? No, 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 no. No, well, Ed might be watching from his sick bed, but Phil certainly will be, bless him. Oh. Yeah. No, he's iller than that, everybody. Oh. <laughs> We've got Richard, John, and Mark on technicals, and Leslie Dolphin is our floor manager. Yay! And you are our capacity crowd. And would you give a plig? Life's a Pitch TV welcome to our special guest. She's so popular. She's back for a second time. 70 years at Portman Road. Pat Gobble! much for inviting me back again. I thoroughly enjoyed it last time, although I didn't realise it was being a show uh, live because one of my cousins rang in. But uh, it was fun and I enjoyed it. So I was pleased to say yes when Terry asked me again. But um, the chappy Wright, who is one of your sponsors, I just noticed, maybe if he's got time after sponsoring you, he'd come and sort my front garden out, please. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, aye. <laughs> he, he, he reorganised it and did it about five years ago and it's still crumbling away. <laughs> well, I, I, I suspect the word will reach him, don't you? Probably, yeah. <laughs> He'll say, I'll, I'll see, I'll see, I'll see. Anyway, lovely to see you all here and uh, I look forward to seeing you another time as well if you would like to invite me. Oh, my goodness me, me. Oh, I think we'd want a third time, don't we? <laughs> no interruptions tonight, Pat. Oh. Nobody's you're, going you're scared to we'll ham off. He's yep. probably not will, uh, no. ill at all. He's, mm. he's probably just frightened. You told him off last time, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> Quite not right. the first time it. I've told people off no, either. No, he needed it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like having royalty on the sofa, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Football Thanks, royalty. You said 70 years. 70 years in July. Right. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing, yes. Incredible. Yes. yes. And you remember so much of uh, what's happened over over that time and... We've heard your stories, and we'll get some more out of you tonight about the FA Cup. Um, and what a relationship you've had with the club and with the players and the staff over all those years. I've been very lucky, I think, because I had a fantastic mother um, who did all the housework, everything. She cooked as soon as I got home. There was a lovely uh, roaring fire in the winter, and uh, I didn't have to do anything, so I could devote quite a lot of my time, more of my time perhaps than anybody else. But uh, it was working for and with such super people. The players, I just love them all and keep in touch with quite a few of them and we're organising 43rd reunion next March, is it about the 43rd? I've been involved with that as well. So I, I, I've been very, very lucky, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. And the FA Cup does bring back many, many happy memories. But I was telling Mark just now, my... My memory is not as good as it used to be, so forgive me if I you pick something up that I, I couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> how, I many, how many are here tonight who were there at the day? On the, well done. Yeah. I, I've got with me one or two bits and pieces, and this is not mine. My, my ticket went on display in a cabinet, but I don't know where that's gone. 
but this is a cup final ticket that was £2.50 standing on the terraces. <coughs> east, upper standing. I can't remember east or west, but I was, I was in a first seat inside from the director's box, or the royal box, I should say. Fantastic. And, and you're going to show everybody your garter later and your... There's a... There's a <laughs> <laughs> all right. Keep, keep, keep listening. Keep listening, because that story's coming up a little bit later on. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've also got Sam with us, and we'll catch up with Sam very shortly. Sam is from Maidstone, and he's one of the players from Maidstone, and we're going to catch up with him on the screen a little bit later on to see how they're feeling about their big day out uh, this coming Saturday. So lots of FA Cup talk tonight, uh, but we've also got to take a look at how town are doing so far. Uh, let's see what the boys make of the season so far. This is sponsored by the Dove in Ipswich. <laughs> So, Terry, Russell, the last match. What do we make of that? Slow start. Yeah, but just like the first game. It's like the two games are really identical. Same scoreline, same way the goals were scored. And it's, I just think it, it... I mean, this was going to be the real test. Yeah, if we lost to Leicester, then you know Southampton and Leeds are getting closer and all that sort of thing. So it would have put a bit of doubt. But I just think, I just think the way that they, they came in the second half and improved and, and took the game to Leicester... I don't think there's anybody to be worried about at all in this league. And you rightly said in the top two, and I, I can't see that, that not happening. It has to happen, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think we're holding our own quite well. If you look at certain situations in the game against Leicester, man for man, they were probably better than us at times, especially in the first half. But I think our um, unity amongst the players drives them through right to the, the final whistle of the game. And they... They're not worried if they go a goal down. Uh, they've come back from being um, behind on many occasions this season, which does you the world of good. You know, you get a lot of belief from being able to do that. Second half, one or two things changed. Uh, personnel changed a little bit and a little bit disappointed that we didn't actually go on and, and win the game. We had a couple of chances, a couple of bad decisions made by one or two players who sort of chose to shoot rather than play somebody else in who was probably in a better position. I'm talking about Broadhead and Wes Burns uh, on a couple of occasions. But those things happen and uh, we weren't far off getting all three points there. Another 10 minutes, we probably would have got another goal, maybe. Who knows? We were the one that looked as if we were going to score to win, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I thought that the substitutions, and the substitutes coming on played a big part. They lifted the tempo. I mean, it, you know, the, the, the most impressive thing, at half-time, Kieran McKenna must have said, look, we've got to press them more because they are going, they are, they do take big risks so press them with even more intent they were far more aggressive on that and i think that paid paid dividends because there was a big doubt that entered Leicester's heads to say well we're not going to score the second goal we've got to try and hang on for the one nil and that's always a dangerous game as we've seen but i thought the substitutes were, were terrific Hutchison and Samiento were were lightning and you know there's tiring legs in that midfield for for Leicester and these fresh boys come on and wow well, they they've got good pace and Kept the same system, but he just improved it with the substitutions. Pat, were you happy with the draw? <coughs> yes, I I didn't realise at the time where they were. I, I still don't know where they play. Well, um, obviously, what the ground they play in, but what league are they in? <laughs> anyway, yeah. uh, yes. But going, yeah. <laughs> going back to our cup final... Um, I, an auntie said to me after we'd won it, she said, but you didn't play anybody uh, on the way there. It was only the Arsenal, well, West Brom. But why worry? That's not our fault if we get drawn lower clubs, beat them and go on. Because I was very disappointed when I think the first person not to play the normal first team in a cup game was Mick McCarthy. And I did tell you on Sky, uh, radio that I was disappointed in his... Um, selection because I I thought that we would play our best teams but they wanted to concentrate on the league. It means so much though a cup run for you, for, for the ex-players, for, yes. for many yes. of you here in the capacity crowd, yes. a good cup yes. run yes. but breeds success as well doesn't it? Well I think so, I mean there's only one gentleman who came to our cup final, our cup final we've only had one so uh, and I was there obviously and thoroughly enjoyed it and know what it involves much more than you people can realise what was involved and I thoroughly enjoyed it so why not success breeds success doesn't it yes 
This yes. is what I say. Well, uh, let's bring in somebody who possibly would uh, have a slightly different opinion, Pat, <laughs> to uh, the capacity crowd and us sitting on the sofa here. It is going to be a massive day out. Uh, what, four and a half thousand fans coming from Maidstone? Really? Yep. Really? Well uh, let's talk to, uh, to Sam Bone, who joins us uh, on our screen right now, who's one of the Maidstone players. Give him a big round of applause. Hey, hi. <laughs> Hi Sam. Great, great to Hi see guys, you, Sam. Okay. Great Thanks to see you. Uh, how are you feeling ahead of Saturday? Um, yeah, look, just, just really excited. Um, you know, when the when the draw came out, um, you know, we were we were so happy with it—a a chance to play in front of you know twenty-five plus thousand people. Uh, we were hoping we were going to get TV. Uh, that's worked out in our favour. So. Um, yeah, just really excited. It's going to be a great day for the for the club, for everyone associated with the club, for friends and family. And, uh, yeah, one that, that we're really looking forward to. So when the draw happened, you were very pleased with that number being pulled out? Well, look, obviously, you know, we, we, we wanted to play Liverpool or, or City or something. Uh, but then upon reflection, you know, looking at YouTube highlights and stuff like that, we, you know, it's a, it's a good draw. Uh, we could have drawn Wrexham or or someone else, so uh, we'll take it. We're happy. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you and the, the travelling supporters will have a fantastic welcome as well. Uh, what, what's the town like at the moment? Give us a, an idea of what, what the, the locals are feeling and the fans ahead of their big day out. I'll tell you, I've never seen the, the town so buzzing. Um, we actually, we have like a little coffee club um, and the people behind the desk and all that make the coffee have no idea about football, but <laughs> somehow they've, they've, they've been told about this FA Cup run and you bump into people on the streets and they're saying, oh, good luck. And everyone seems to be wearing, you know, mason on scarves and mason on hats. So uh, the town's buzzing, as are we, and uh, we're just looking forward to Saturday now. Uh, you're, of course, uh, talking to fans, uh, ex-players, staff uh, who have got history in the FA Cup. I don't know if you can see this, Sam, but this is what it's like to win the FA Cup. Look, there is a 1978 genuine Ipswich FA Cup final rosette. Isn't that lovely, everybody? Look at that. Hey! Would you like one of those, Sam, with yeah, Maidstone on? <laughs> What's that? I can not quite hear. Oh, so would, would you, you like one of those with Maidstone on? Oh. Absolutely, I would. That, no that, chance. That nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> so have we got sort of window displays there then? People making cups out of, FA cups out of aluminium so foil and things or what? Yeah, yeah. Actually, one of the uh, one of the players showed us a picture yesterday. Uh, his little nephew's got his... Um, He's got his FA Cup, one of the trophies that his dad's made for him. So uh, the family have all got there. The club brought out some um, some Ipswich Town scarves with, with obviously the Maystone logo and all on it. So um, all my family have got one of them. They've got the hats. They've got, in fact, even my cousin bought um, a Maystone top the other day. So yeah, they're uh, they're already like. Well, let me introduce you to our two legends on the sofa, Terry Butcher and Russell Osman. I'm sure they want to have a, a, a quick chat with you and uh, some questions okay, for you. Okay. So uh, I was just interested when you said you've got a coffee club, but it's a sign of the times because we had a beer and curry club, didn't we? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just, I wouldn't just, find uh, one of them now as well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure if you, I'm sure if you do really well on Saturday, you'll have more than just beer. But uh, no, it's, I mean, it's, I mean what it, what's your expectation of the game? Because... This season, Ipswich Town going to the ground at Portman Road and with the crowd buzzing the way it is, it's mm. going to be some atmosphere. Are you, are, you, are you ready for that? Because obviously, with due respect in your league, you don't actually play in front of the crowds like that and a stadium that's buzzing like that all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I think at this stage of the competition, you're always going to play a, you know, a team that's in, whether it's Premier League or, or, or Championship, you know, so... Um, yeah, look, it's new to me. It's new to the players um, playing in front of a crowd that big. So, um, yeah, look, we're ready. Um, I'm sure the the gaffer and his assistant will have a game plan for us on Saturday, and you know we'll uh, we'll look to execute in the best way possible. And and who knows what can happen. Sam Russell Osman here. When are you coming through to Ipswich? Friday night, or is it normal Saturday morning travel? 
No, no, we'll we'll be there on the uh, on Friday evening. So we'll we'll train tomorrow as normal, um, do our analysis and whatnot, and then uh, we'll be on our way and we'll stay the night there. And and it gives us a chance to to really take it in, you know, with the with the players tomorrow. Um, and then yeah, look, Saturday is is business time. So uh, yeah, really exciting. When we used to play European games, if we were away from home, we had the. Uh, the beauty of going and training on the pitch the night before the game. Hmm. So if the game was a Wednesday night, we'd tra uh, train on the pitch on a Tuesday night, get used to the environment, the changing rooms and everything. You won't have that luxury. So are you looking forward to coming to Portman Road? Lovely, flat, firm, wet pitch. The ball will be zipping about for you in front of close to 30,000 people. That's right. Yeah, no, the questions were asked uh, whether or not we were going to be... Uh going to be training on the pitch, but uh, I don't think that's the case. Um, I've actually been to Portman Road once when I was at Charlton. We played the, the 23s there. So, um, oh. you know, I, I, bloody hell, like a lovely pitch, lovely stadium. So, um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be great to actually play in front of a packed up Portman Road. And it's one that we're, we're looking forward to. I don't, I, I think there were rumours about us possibly going to see the pitch tomorrow evening, but we haven't heard anything. So, it, uh, it'll it's be, flat it'll and be it's green. The boys in Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> it beats us because we're not official. It could be, could be war. But, but Sam, looking through your, your career, you mean at, at the age of 18, mm -hmm. you had testicular cancer. So from that point to now and playing in, in the fourth round of the FA Cup, which is a first for Maitland, you know, it's, it must, be some, must have been some journey which you never thought you'd possibly going to make. Yeah, well, look, it's funny how, how life works, you know, um, God, what, six, seven years ago, I was in the mindset that I might not be able to kick a ball again. So to to be on that journey, and it's funny you say that because I was asked that the other day, does it make me appreciate these moments more? And I think it does because, there, like I said, there was a part in my life where it was scary, you know? it was uh, There was a lot of doubt and, you know, I, uh, I had my family to support me. I had my friends to support me and, you know, I kept working. I kept kept working at my craft and... Yeah, I suppose now I'm, I'm reaping the benefits of all that hard work that I've put in after, after the uh, the cancer stuff. So um, yeah, look, just just really excited is without a doubt one of the biggest biggest days of my career and uh, one that I'm really trying to relish. You know, it, it, I said it to my friend the other day. I actually wish that the the cup game was next week because it gives me a bit of time to actually embrace this moment because we've had so many games like midweek games. Um, so yeah, just like I said, I keep saying it was just so excited for the day. You know, I've got my family and friends there, and it's going to be live on BBC for for, for people who perhaps going to get tickets. So, uh, you know, speaking on behalf of the team, we're we're so excited and uh, and we're ready as well. So that's the main thing. Sam, can you imagine drilling one in from 25, 30 yards at uh, Portman Road for Mason tomorrow <laughs> or well, Saturday? Me, I've, I, I've, I've visualised that many times. Uh, I've visualised that many times. And look, Gives a clue. Top to, right uh, or top left? <laughs> to, well, to anywhere. Anywhere will do. Even if it comes off my bloody knee, I'll be happy. But um, no, look, it, it's something that you obviously, you dream of, you know, when you hear the draw, your your mind starts trying to, you know, take it to the game and how it pans out and stuff. And yeah, obviously, look, I've been visualising scoring the winner and whatnot, but uh Look, if I don't care who scores, Jamie. I wasn't saying the winner, Sam. I wasn't saying the winner. <laughs> <laughs> Consolation goal, maybe. <laughs> hey, look, scoring on BBC wouldn't be too bad, so uh, I'll take it however it goes in, you know? Good man. Yeah. Well, look, we wish you um, the very best for Saturday. Hope you have a good afternoon, but frankly, not too good. Um, which I'm sure you'll understand comes with the best wishes from all of us here. And can I just introduce you to Pat Gobold, who uh, in uh, a couple of months, two or three months, will have been at Ipswich Town for 70 years. Um, what do you reckon Maidstone's chances are on Saturday, Pat? Well, I'm an Ipswich Town supporter. So I must say we will win. <laughs> but but welcome to Portman Road. I don't know if you remember anybody from Ipswich Town. I'm told that Darren Oxbro, an Ipswich Town youngster, didn't make the first team really, and he played for Maidstone when he left Ipswich. I think he's hoping to come oh, wow. to the match. Yes, interesting. Oh, um, brilliant. Yeah, that'd be great. Great. It's good to see you. And uh, after Saturday... Forgive me, but I'm saying after Saturday, I wish you all the best for the future. 
<laughs> thank you so much, Sam. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sam, thank you very much for coming on. Give him a big round of applause, everybody. Thanks, Sam. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Take care. What a great lad. What a great lad. And uh, what, what a day out for them it's going to be, isn't it, on Saturday, Russ? Yeah, brilliant. You know, they'll, they'll get there. They'll soak up the atmosphere before the game. I suppose they're on the pitch for half an hour, is it now, before kickoff? So yeah. plenty of time to get used to the, the surroundings. But, you know, when you first hear the noise... You know, when the, the teams come onto the pitch, that is something special. I think, I think the previous half an hour, they'll all be on the toilet, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my worry... I, was, I wasn't going to say that, but I thought... Uh, I would. Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> last weekend, I went to, to Bristol City because I was the manager of Bristol City when we knocked Liverpool out of the FA Cup years ago. So the fellas interviewed me and he said, Russell, can you tell us... Um, what, what the smell and the atmosphere was like in Liverpool. And I said, I can't describe that smell. I'm not changing it. <laughs> the smell of Anfield? What? Well, they said, Silly I think question, the, the smell's please. the same every Saturday, to be honest. Yeah. I, I really should have warned him about the sprinklers, shouldn't I, at Portman Road? Yeah. Cause, <laughs> no. So that'll be a little bit of extra entertainment because they won't be used to those popping up on well, their Well, they're not ground, used to them they? because their pits, the Gallagher Stadium, is, is AstroTurf. So they've, they've had to come from AstroTurf. They played on, on Tuesday, yeah. They played Braintree. Tuesday, so they're, they're coming into the game without doing well. I suppose they, they must have done some preparation. What they do because a lot of the grounds in the National League South, you know, are not so much AstroTurf, so mm. poor pitches. But I mean, it's just it's the occasion. It's just the people say don't play the occasion, you know, play the yeah. game. But it's so difficult when you go out there yeah. and you see this, and you see what it's going to be, and the noise and everything else. It's just incredible. It, it's this kind of fixture, Pat, isn't it, that that brings back the magic of the FA Cup? Because a lot of people say, oh, it's not the same as it used to be. But when you have these kind of matchups, then that's still special, isn't it? Oh, it will be special. But certainly, I think the magic has gone from the FA Cup. I was talking to David Rose the other day, and David Rose and I got on very, very well. He joined the club when he was fifteen, and he's right through his career he was with us but um, we miss the atmosphere we used to produce our own tickets uh, on a Gastetna and stamping and numbering them and what have you and then if you had a replay from the Saturday you played the following Tuesday or Wednesday you're all nodding and thinking exciting and we were Saturday night Sunday all day working to get the tickets ready. It was exciting and I think that it has lost that now when you've got 10 days in between. Mind you um, we have a bigger crowd now um, our gates were not quite so good when we were winning the cup that season but um, uh, it, it has lost a bit of the atmosphere but I, I'm not going anyway to Saturday. I don't go to the cup games but I'll t there's a you reason. You watch on telly, can't you? Yes, yeah. yes, I yeah. will. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I have your ticket back? <laughs> <laughs> But yes, you will have to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but do I pay face value? Uh, you know, no, anyway. Well, I'm a senior citizen. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm nearly, but there we <laughs> But Pat, we were talking talking earlier about the first time that there wasn't a replay was when we played uh, Manchester City at Villa Park, Park in '83 yes. in the in the run then uh, in '81. So. And uh, that was the first time that there wasn't going to be a replay and it went into ex extra time. Obviously, you know, Kevin Beattie broke his arm yeah, and that was the last game, game he, wasn't it? he played. Yeah. yeah, And we got beat by Paul Power. His only free kick he ever scored in his life. Not even in five-a-side did he score a goal. Like, he was yeah. hopeless. I give, I give the free kick away, but that's another story. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but th thanks for reminding me. <laughs> I wasn't going to mention it. Thanks for me, yeah. <laughs> Let's go back to, it was uh, free kicks, to was the, uh, <laughs> the, the cup run of, of 78. And, Russ, you played in uh, all the rounds, I think, bar the semi in the final, wasn't it? I know, I was robbed of a medal. Yeah, did you not yeah. get one? No. Nope. Oh, my goodness. No, I've the got only... a campaign coming on, don't you? <laughs> yeah, quite right as well, Mark. Come on. Yeah, Go on. I'll, I'll, you know. I think, I think you'd, get get... you'd get one now. You'd get one now, wouldn't you? You'd get one now, yeah, because they've got a squad of about 20 odd players now mm. as well. So I think it was just the 12 people that were stripped on the day. So yeah. Mickey Lambert. Who hopefully we'll have on the show one day. Yep. When he can be bothered. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Mickey. Come on. Yes. Come and on. Mr. Mills and yeah. Mr. Walk. Yes. Come on. 
Well, Mickey Lambert, he was a chosen substitute for the day. Kevin Beatty and Alan Hunter both passed a fitness test on that day, as they did with the, the semi-final. Uh, if either of them had have failed the fitness test, I would have played. Um, but as it was, they both passed a fitness test. Walkie could always slip back during the game if one of them needed to come off. And obviously, there's more um, variations to the formation. If Mickey Lambert was on the bench, he could come on, play up front, he could play wide, he could play midfield. So I got bombed out. Um, take us back to the start of that run. What was the uh, what was the run like? When uh, did you realise that? Well, actually, hang on a moment. This this could be our year. Well, Cardiff um, was a pretty straightforward game. Hard. Um, Hartlepool was interesting because you suddenly think, you know, they're the underdogs and they came down to to Portman Road and. Uh, and again, you're just making sure that you don't let yourselves down. Um, and then we went to the Eastfield Stadium for Bristol Rovers. That was a tough game. And we nearly went out because um, um, we went 2-1 down. Bobby Gould scored a great goal, actually, from the, the wing. I say a great goal, a lucky goal that flew in the top corner and got disallowed for some reason. And then we scored an equaliser a little bit after that. And then we beat them in the replay, again another replay, uh, back at Portman Road. <coughs> Millwall, that was fun. Mm. Invaded the pitch about three or four times during Did the you game. Go, were you at that game, Pat, the Millwall game? No, I no, wasn't. No, you kept away yeah, from that six, one. So I don't I didn't blame you, I did go Pat. to any away games until the final. Right. Yeah. And what, what was that like? I mean, for those, some, a lot of people will know about what happened at Millwall, but just explain what that day was like, because it was horrific for players and fans alike, wasn't it? Um, yeah, I think it, it all started because George Burley scored a goal, which yeah. nobody had uh, ever expected in their lives, really. You know, so. <laughs> Sorry, I think, George. I think, but, I, think, yeah, I think George had scored before that, but not not many times, did he? So yeah. No, but it was. I mean, I was there as I was there on the bench. It wasn't a sub. I was thirteenth man. I didn't. We never got changed or stripped. He just packed the kit up and helped, you know, clean the dressing rooms. But you know, it was, I was there. And it was, it was. I mean, I was. You were on the pitch, and I was in the dugout, and I was petrified in the dugout. At least I was sheltered, but it was awful. I was next to Alan Hunter, though, so I was oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the problem was, we, you know, you come onto the pitch from behind the goal in those days at the old den, and we were actually defending the other goal. So when the pitch invasion came, as it did on a couple of occasions, we had to come sprinting down the pitch, the whole length of the pitch. Well, Alan didn't sprint, no, really, did he? You know, he no, no. just knocked a few people over and <laughs> chinned a couple on the way and <laughs> dropped the nuts on a couple more. <laughs> if I can interrupt there, I can, can go that. back to Jim Feeney, an Irish fullback playing for the town, and uh, I used to babysit for his children, and he would say they never looked forward to going to the den at any time. You know, they were always watching what was coming, whizzing pot around their ears, and that, that was... A bit of a, a crowd, you yeah. know. And on the Monday after we played, um, I was uh, our reception was where the tickets were sold and everything. And a gentleman came in to see see somebody at the club, and he'd got well a lump the size of an egg. Uh, he'd been hit by something at the as a supporter yeah. at that match. Probably Alan Hunter. Well, it could well have been. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes, it yeah. was. Yeah, Millwall is not a friendly place, even on a Sunday afternoon, is it? <laughs> well, I've not been other than that. I haven't <laughs> been. Yes, I have been to the New Den once, but. Uh, did you, but did you think after that game, that well, obviously in the semis, then did you think then, as a as a player, that, you know, this is, we we can do this. I think you you realise that you've got a a chance that not a lot of people get to. Uh, in their playing career, and even if it's just a semi-final of the FA Cup, that, you know we're talking about the FA Cup. It used to be on the television from first thing in the morning till you know after the game had finished. John Motson, you know, they'd be at the hotel, they'd be on the coach. You had a, a whole day's viewing, and once she got the chance of playing in the semi-final, you know, crikey, one more game and you're in the final, and it's just to play in the FA Cup final in front of so many people was. Would be magnificent. What was it like back at Portman Road uh, ahead of the semi-final, Pat? Were you were you thinking, oh my goodness, were you preparing to sell final tickets or what? Well, 
I, I can tell you, going back for earlier in the season, for the first time ever, David Rose, Mr. Robson, one or two people, decided to issue vouchers. You remember? Yep. Did you have the right number? <laughs> well, we issued vouchers when you came through the turnstiles. We didn't have to worry about the season ticket holders because we'd already got their numbers and their names and everything. If we had got to a big match, first time we'd ever done it, we didn't issue them when we played Man U, Tottenham or whoever. We issued them when we played, sorry, lower teams in that league. Like Norwich because, or like that. Well... <laughs> because we knew you were genuine supporters if you were coming to see every game. So they issued these with the thought that we might do well, way back, probably the third or fourth match in the season. And then the trouble started when on a Friday night we got into the, uh, the final and the tickets were going on sale. And season tickets, as I say, we didn't have to record because... This was way before um, uh, your, I don't know what you call it, spreadsheets and all these newfangled things that I'm not into. We had to record every person who bought a ticket from us and keep a note of their numbers, their addresses and everything so that if anything went wrong, it came back to us if they were sold. So on the no Friday night, it was announced that anybody holding four, I, I can't exactly remember, but four, say four out of five issued. Well, I was working the next morning. Charlie Woods has got a reserve team game or something that day. And I was the only one at the office. David Rose and Mr. R, that was an away game that Saturday, the day after the announcement of the sale. Uh, they went off to sit down and work out how many tickets we should give to players, former players, staff, how many for this and that, and work it all out. We were lucky. We got 28,000 tickets for the cup final, and our gate average was not that number, so we knew that we could help everybody. Well, then the next, the Saturday morning, Charlie was in there having a cup of coffee, as usual, with me, and people were coming in, You've issued this voucher system. I was at the such and such again, but I had, uh, I, I went home and put the ticket in my pocket, the voucher, and <laughs> yes, my my wife washed the, the, put them in the laundry, and my ticket was the, the dog got to my ticket. <laughs> I couldn't come to that game. I saw all the others, but I had to go on that Saturday afternoon to my grandfather's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> What did you say? That's no excuse? <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, I didn't make the arrangements, <laughs> but I have to carry them through. I remember that, but it worked very, very well. But there were, obviously, you're always going to get some people who were disappointed, but uh, uh, it, it was fantastic leading up to, um, I don't know how much more you want me to tell well, you. We'll come on to that in a moment. I just want to ask, about Russell, when you, when you won that semi-final, or when the team won that semi-final, both of you, because you were both around, uh, players who were in that team have said to me in the past that actually that was almost better than the final in a way because knowing that you'd reached Wembley, yeah. knowing that that was coming and, and the build up to it, you know, everybody wanted a ticket, the town was buzzing, you know, it was a fantastic feeling to know that you were going to Wembley. I think what the players were looking forward to most was um, making the new record. <laughs> if if, 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 if get that goal and that was it. Just, can you remember that, everybody? Can we? Yeah. One, two, three. Ip switch, ip switch, get that. Yeah, it's not very, you know. No, it wasn't at the time no. either. <laughs> Memorable. I wonder why we don't play that at Portman Road now. No. But that was, that was uh, the singing apparently, according to Beat, was a bit like that to begin with until someone sent over for a crate of beer. Is that right? Y yeah. It does help after you've had a few beers, yeah. Terry, doesn't it, to loosen up the older... I think it helps with everything. Yeah, no yeah. problem. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's good, but, but just getting to the final was magnificent, you know, and it was uh, great for the town. You saw the reaction um, back at the the corn exchange after we we'd won and bought the the trophy back. How many people were there? And, you know, sitting on the rooftops of every building, on top of every lamppost. I think that was Jason Dazelle, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Jason was up there <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> He's on top, on top of a pylon somewhere or something like that. But I, I, thought, but I actually thought, having lost the semi in 81, I, I sort of thought, well, that's 
that really hurt me more yeah. than if I'd gone to the final and lost the final because at least you've got there. Yeah. But I th this is such a big thing, the, the semi-final, the pressure on the semi-final because you desperately want to get there. But then when you're, you're, you, know, you, you desperately want to win, but you're actually in the final. And, and Johnny, I think Johnny Walk said the whole world stops for the FA Cup final. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't now, but it used to. So that's that was the importance of it then. Oh, I remember, what, you know, as a kid waking up on the morning watching Multicoloured Swap Shop. Uh, who can remember Delia Smith with her blue and white rosette? <laughs> in Christchurch Park with Keith Chegwin. Um, yeah, I've got a T-shirt with her on at home with that blue, ro blue and white rosette. <coughs> I have, yeah. I'll wear it one of these weeks. No, maybe yeah. I'll use it to... No, I won't. No, no, no. <laughs> I remember watching the, the 1981 cup final. So it's Manchester City against Tottenham. And that went to replay. Do you remember where we watched the replay? No. No? Did where? we watch it in the Glasgow Apollo? Did we go and see the Rolling Stones and they're watching the game? I, th I think so. Yeah, I, I can't remember. I mean, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to watch the. I didn't want to watch the final, and, and even the replay because you, you, that's what that's the thing about losing because you, you say it should be us there. Yeah. You know, and then I think we deserve to be there. Not so much on the day because it was a nothing game, but the very fact that it was extra time, as Russell said, would have gone to a replay, um, and it was it's the season that we had. We we deserved to get to the final. So. You know, to have that taken away from you, because you know, you think of the the, the championship and the and the FA Cup and the UEFA Cup. You want to win the championship and the the FA Cup. They're the two ones for you. But Europe is a bonus. But you know, ultimately, we did get something. But it was, mm. it was just the whole the whole thing. Because did you have to, Pat? Did you have to? You you're awake, Pat? You're okay there. You're, yes. you're, you're <laughs> asleep, asleep. I'm listening. I'm oh, listening. I thought you fell asleep. There. I there's normally doze off in the there's evening. A, there's a cushion there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Hello. <laughs> Hello. So, did did you were you in charge? You and David Rose in charge of all the the you know the booking the hotels and the meals and all that kind of thing, the preparation. Well, yeah, we did have somebody book hotels for us. Um, somebody who knew the good hotels for uh, put us in touch with. It wasn't James but, Easter, uh, was it? <laughs> he, he, he was a lad, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he was a lad, James. But uh, yes. Yeah, um, Easter time. No. It, it, um, I can't remember exactly everything, uh, but I do remember it was great. And I remember Laurie McMenemy's secretary who wrote to Mr. Robson after the final. And uh, she, they had been a couple of years previous in the final. Yeah. And she said it was something that uh, she didn't really enjoy. It was so busy and everything. And I would go through that any time. To preparing for it was it was great. The ticket sales, which I said mm -hmm. you'd go on to later, but um, what happened leading up to and it it was just one of those very very happy many many happy Cues memories. Were huge, weren't they? Like, around the ground for the tickets. Yes, I uh, shall I. Yeah. Uh, it was a Saturday morning when we sold. Well, Saturday nine o'clock. We played Bristol City at home in the afternoon. And I was I went to Len Fletcher. I don't know how many people remember Len Fletcher, the footballer from the fifties. He did my hair, mm -hmm. and I used to go and see him quite regularly. And I went to the ground, and I wanted to park behind by Churchman's at half past seven in the morning. He went in specially, starting to sell the tickets. I couldn't get in. <laughs> The, you know where the ticket office was, which is now the reception. Yeah. The queue went right down the drive. Round to the right, the Constantine Road, round the back of the North Stand, as it was then, down Portman Road, into um, Princess Street, Russell Road. Blimey. But it was people who were taking their deck chairs and they'd gone for the night and they'd been there such a long time. And I remember going to talk to them when I did eventually come back from the hairdressers. I couldn't get in the gate. So I said, well, if you don't let me in, there won't be any tickets for sale. <laughs> so they all, <laughs> they all had to move back and let me in. And we had the night before, hoping it wouldn't rain or anything. Well, first of all, the FA sent us posters of the layout of the sale, where the tickets were, which section, how much they were. So we pasted them on the tins as you go down the main drive. And I went round and I found out for my family's sake, I suppose, which were the best seats. And uh, I told these people, they're the best seats. No, 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 I can remember... 
George Anders, uh, Anderson, I think, from Woodbridge, and another fellow who was a very keen season ticket holder from the Woodbridge area. He said, Pat, we've waited all these years to get to the cup final. We're going to have the best. Well, I said, OK, I've told you what I think was the best. They found me still in the stand, in fact, talking to Julie Andrews' father and stepmother at the end of the game, oh. still in the stand. They found me and they said, wish we'd have taken your advice. We couldn't see. We were so high up. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> and it, it was absolutely fantastic. Was, somebody said to me earlier, you had to get in extra staff. Well, we were very small staff and uh, at the time. And Mr. Robson had two very, very good friends. The Richards, do you remember? They used to serve drinks behind the bar on a match day to the players. They came and helped. And two friends of mine from the farm next to where I was living, they came and uh, helped Mary and Mike Hollingsworth. You remember them? And they came for several times during that season to help me. And they came that morning. And <laughs> the amazing thing was we're... The counter where we sold the tickets was there was two little windows of very, very similar. And I've only been on one train station since 1997, and that was to see the naming of the train last week, first time since 1997. So I don't know what the ticket office windows look like now, but they were very small. If my mother had stood the other side and asked for a ticket, I wouldn't <laughs> know who she was. I could see people further away, two little ticket officers, and we had a counter here with all the lists that we had to write people's names on. And the drawer came out. There was two wooden bowls to put the coins in and a, a little box to put your paper money in. Well, we didn't know what to do. So we got a huge cardboard box, put it in the middle of the floor. We took fives, tens, threw them in their floor. And Mr. Patrick, who was the chairman at the time, <laughs> Mr. John had resigned in 76 <laughs> as the chairman. Mr. Patrick could not rest. Mr. Robson sat next to him at the, watching the Bristol City game. And he said he was like a cat on hot bricks. Mr. Patrick kept coming down. Are you OK? What's happening? Talking to the fans down the drive apologising, I'm sorry, they're doing their best. They said, said, we don't mind if we're missing the match, we want to get our tickets. And then he did come into the office and uh, we turned around and there's Mr Patrick, what is he, six foot four or whatever, his long legs at each side of this cardboard box salting out the fives and the tens for us. <laughs> <laughs> I am yeah, going to mention the name, perhaps I shouldn't, but I said, look at Mr. Patrick, chairman of the club. Can you see Arthur South doing that? <laughs> 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 yes, it, it was just one of those things. And I said I wouldn't go. But I remember Johnny Walk and Clive Woods. They said, well, we'll make sure you do go. We'll come back and we'll get you. But I did eventually go. And we had a, a coach from the ground for the wives yeah. and the staff. And you've brought your souvenirs with you, haven't you, today? Uh, well, I wore everything blue and white. I had my everything? nails. I had my <laughs> nails painted blue. <laughs> and Basil Akers, lovely chap. Do you remember Basil Akers, a fullback, a local chappy? And he worked in the um, Blue uh, whatever they called it, with Tommy Parker. He and his wife were on the bus, and I said I was going to be wearing everything blue and white. And I didn't know that on that morning. I think it was probably local BBC, I remember, uh, I can't remember the interviewer's name. Anyway, when I went down the, talking to people who were going, Russell and, and everybody, and uh, he said, um, uh, Basil said, have you actually got everything blue and white? I said, yes, I have, including, and I lifted up, the suit was navy blue that the club bought me because the team all had special outfits. Then Mr. Robson bought me a lovely white blouse with, I chose it myself, with blue and the navy blue dashes on it and it just looked Ipswich Town. And I, we wore this, we were all given a, uh, a buttonhole, blue and white, and I have known Ken Brown, the Norwich manager, player, yeah. West Ham. <laughs> oh, he shouldn't be booed. He was such a lovely man. <laughs> oh, no, he wasn't. Oh, yes, he was. <laughs> and when he had finished football, he liked to come to Portman Road. And I looked after the Drex box tickets for ordinary matches. And he'd ring and say, do you think I could come in? Yes, are you and a friend? And he often brought me little gifts, including... 
garters. And I wore this garter for the cup final and Basil had heard, how, and as I, I said, yes, everything. And I didn't realise that the cameras were on me. <laughs> Pat, Pat did, um, did Mr Brown bring in garters to you every time he came in? No, oh, right, not then. every time. I've got two white ones and a black one, but I never did wear the black one. <laughs> I think some of the players wear them they, these were days. They, were they from Ken Brown then? No? Yes, Ken Brown. Oh, he's Jane. got a bit of a thing for a garter, is he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why he plays for Norwich, I think. Oh. <laughs> and on the Friday morning leading up to the cup final, um, Mr Patrick Cobbold, he came in and he gave me this lovely seed pearl brooch as a thank you for what I had done working. And he gave one to Mr. Robson and one to David Rose to take home for their wives. I, I, I don't wear it in case it might fall off. And, uh, and the box that the FA Cup uh, came in was very large, heavy, and it had handles and one broke. And I've got the piece of brass. <laughs> I, kept, I kept that. Who broke it? I didn't break it. No, I don't know. <laughs> But also, if I can go on a bit. Um, yes, you can go on a bit, Pat. There's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Good job I know these boys, isn't it? <laughs> I love them all. Um, we had to, uh, well, we didn't have to, but I decided that I would keep a diary for the FA Cup to go out on loan for people FA uh, on display I don't know if you ever went anywhere where it was on display I do remember going to the Suffolk show I'm very very lucky I had a lot of farming friends who were season ticket holders and always invited to go on complimentary tickets and go and meet them and uh, have a coffee um, and they had it with the stewards in the centre of a ring uh, uh, people were standing away from it and John Kerr, lovely John Kerr, director and former chairman, unfortunately passed away earlier this year. Oh, lo earlier last year, sorry. And uh, we sat looking, uh, stood looking at it with me, and the lady behind said, is that what all the fuss is about, a little bit of tin? <laughs> <laughs> John Norwich. Kerr and she I just... She must have been from Norwich, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you missed a boo then, you missed an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the cup... You've got an interesting thing about the cup, haven't you? I. <laughs> yeah, I've got the, the ribbons somewhere. Yeah. Uh, the blue and white ribbons. Can't quite uh, put my hand on them at the moment. Oh. It's just moving. But somebody sent, sent me uh, an envelope with them in. I think you spoke to him, Mark, didn't you, on the radio? This is going back probably 15, maybe 20 years. And he said, you know, just like somebody's have them that would look after them and just... Uh, so I've got them somewhere, I just uh -huh. can't find them. <laughs> but just as I mentioned, I had a diary because so many people for fates and things, dinners and Mr. Robson take, wanted to say this, but we had to be very, very careful who had it. So I had a, the diary, especially for the cup going out on loan. Other clubs didn't do it, apparently. But we thought you had, well, that gentleman there, you had helped us to win the cup and you should share what we had, the thing that was most important, we had won it. And so if you wanted to take it, I would give you a letter of authority when you were going to pick it up from the police station. It was kept at the police station, uh, obviously under lock and key, and I gave a copy of the letter. This person would collect it at such and such a time and have it brought back by such and such a time. And I thoroughly enjoyed keeping it. Can you imagine that, that happening now? Oh, dear, I don't know. <laughs> no chance. Uh, no, I don't think so, or not anymore, but... Uh, Yes, very, very, very happy and The day memories. itself, you obviously had a lovely day out in the sunshine. Well, yes, but the sun didn't shine until we got to the roundabout at Chelmsford because it had been raining and uh, there was a lot of um, flooded fields then, May, uh, going up there. And we had... Um, they, they'd arranged for the players uh, who were not playing uh, and the wives and the staff people to have lunch in the hotel. I don't know if it's still there. I haven't been to Wembley 
for a long time. There was a big hotel as you walked down on the right, was, and it was a conference centre or something. They had lunch there, but Mr R said, no, I would like you to go with Elsie, his wife, into the banqueting hall where we all invited so many people. He said, Mark doesn't want to go, he wants to go. So he went with my friend Mary and Mike and so soaked up the atmosphere. I didn't get all of that. I was not involved in the team coming out. I didn't see them so early. And where well, they came out early and looked at the pitch and the blue and white were all that sort of thing. And I was sitting at a table with Mrs. R. And, and <laughs> I'm sorry if I, I shouldn't really sort of be nasty, but this elderly lady sitting next to me, she said, do you come here often? <laughs> <laughs> So I, I said, well, I've been to Wembley once or twice, but I am work for Ipswich Town Football Club. She said, oh, my husband is a, is a uh, council member. And she said, I come every year to keep him company. And there are many thousands would have given anything to get there rather than a council yeah. member's wife. And the poor old boy sitting opposite her, he knocked a glass of white wine off the table. <laughs> But um, I, I've said this, uh, this little story before. A lady, Blanche Cobbold, Mr. Patrick, Mr. John's mother, she came, she was on the front row. The, the, uh, she loved her football, didn't she? And, and uh, she was there uh, sitting at the top table with Mr. Patrick. And I don't know who it was. After we'd had lunch in the banqueting hall, before we went out uh, to the uh, stadium, Somebody asked her ladyship if she would like to meet the Prime Minister. It was Calla Callaghan? Cal Callaghan? Callaghan? So, pardon? Thatcher? No, I don't think it was. I think it was. Anyway, whoever. Would you like to meet the Prime Minister? And her ladyship said, no, thank you. I would rather have a G and T. <laughs> Quite right. And, and my seat was the first seat at the gangway beside the Royal Box. But I did sit in the Royal Box for the or match in um, August when we uh, we lost in the uh, Charity Shield. 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 Yeah. Can't talk about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I was then. But it, the atmosphere obviously was fantastic. And we, Mary and Mike came with me to the uh, banqueting hall and had coffee and some biscuits or something afterwards and we were one of the last to leave um, because we were having a, a party we stayed at the royal gardens hotel and then uh, i think the, the evening we were at the royal lancaster and anyway um we were coming out and the police were standing not many people around and mike said to one of the policemen you're glad that's all over are you and he said, I've been coming here 15 years and I've never known two teams, supporters, behave so well. Oh, fantastic. Brilliant. Mm. Lovely. Brilliant. I mean, yes. what a fantastic spectacle that mm. was. And, and yes. of course, the, you know, the briefly the Cornhill oh. celebrations there. My goodness. Yes, yes. We, we came into, um, into Ipswich and uh, uh, all the streets were, you know, there was some, actually some West Ham fans cheering us as we came came through with the buses, wasn't there? And um, cow, one or two people had got cows with blue and white and the horse people on horseback <laughs> and the dogs and everything all uh, supporting us. And when we got to Town Hall, well, I, I can't believe the people went for a tour around the, the town, obviously, and uh, the presentation, the mayor was... David Meyer, Myers, Myers was mayor at the time, a short chappy, but uh, uh, he was there in all his regalia. Fantastic. So, great. It was a fantastic and an experience I would love to go through again. Well, we'd better beat Maidstone then at the weekend, you. didn't we? I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wishing Kieran all the best. Yeah. Can I just say something about Kieran? You can say whatever you like, Pat. He is fantastic. The boys will agree, I think. They, I have met him once or twice. I think that my Mr R has got something to do with it, so it's doing so well at the moment. Jose Mourinho, he was at Barcelona, Porto, etc. with Mr R. He picked up a lot of his good points from my Mr R. He then, the Jose was at Tottenham. Kieran was at Tottenham as a coach. Did he pick up anything from Jose? Yose went to Man U, and so Kieran was there. I think it's going full circle. 
there's something coming to us yeah. through. <laughs> Good point, Pat. Fantastic. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, we've just got a couple of people, and we're going to have to be brief because we are really running late tonight. Uh, oh, sorry. No, it's not you. No, no, no. <laughs> Will's here from uh, Wicker Market. Will, Will from Wicker Market. Yeah, boy. hello, Pat. That's right nice to be here with you, dear. And I do remember sitting behind you when we went to Wembley. Um, I was lucky enough to have a good seat. Um, Mr. Patrick got it for me because my father worked for him. So I was very privileged, I felt. And my word, did you look stunning, Gal? Oh. Yeah, you outshone most of them other ladies there, I'll tell you. <laughs> but Pat has been a friend of ours for a lot of years, haven't you, dear? And she's always a kind person. And um, she's going to do me a little favour, aren't you, dear? I'll try. Yeah. And we had a word about it at the last home game. And we got a friend. Um, he's a young man, town supporter all his life. And he lives in Birmingham now. And he came down August Bank Holiday to watch Ipswich play Leeds. Unfortunately, it wasn't a very good weekend for him because Leeds beat us by that odd goal, didn't they? Same as Norwich last night. They got about... <laughs> Mind you, we did stick three past and they didn't, did they? <laughs> and anyway, when he was down here, um, his father said to him, all them shirts you're collecting over the, year, over the years, I'd like you to take them back. So he said he would, he'd take them back. So he put them in his car when he went and he got his family in the car and off they went down the A14 and uh, they got a fair way down the A14 and a red light came on and he thought, oh, that's pretty, I've never seen that before. <laughs> so he carried on a little further and then smoke started coming out from under the dashboards. So he pulled on the side and before he knew where he was, the car was on fire and he got his family out and the car burnt virtually to a cinder. In fact, I got a photo of it here right now. Um, that's the car, look, Pat. That's what, how the car ended up. Oh. And all the shirts were in the back. And the next day, he decided that uh, he'd better go and see if there's anything retrievable from the car. And he opened the boot, and the cases that the shirts were in were more or less intact, a bit scorched. And uh, he thought, well, I'll have a look and see. Perhaps the shirts can be saved. And as luck would have it, the shirts, although with smoke damaged, were OK. But best of all, this one which is number eight, Matty Holland's shirt, was perfectly intact. And Matty Holland was his favourite player of all time. And you remember we asked you about this at the last game. What he'd like you to do, Pat, because I understand you see Matty quite often. Would you get him to sign his name for him yes. on that? On the eight. On the eight. Of course. And Matty's been in touch with him because the sto this story was aired in the East Anglian Daily Times and on social media. And Matty actually got in touch, in touch with him and wished him well and his family. And so I think he'll be delighted to actually sign it for him. Matt's fantastic. He will do that as soon as I... Sorry, Matt is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I know he will do that as soon as I see him. He's very often at the ground, so uh, if I'm there at the right time, I won't leave it with anybody else. I'll hang on to it. Thank you very much, Pat. You're Thank you. Pat. Thank you. Uh, and Carl, Carl's got something for us as well. Carl, come up to the microphone for, uh, for the little museum almost that we're creating here. Yeah, my story um, with the FA Cup really goes back to 1975. I remember boarding a coach and uh, going to Villa Park and we played wet spam and um, drew nil-nil. And then I went to Stamford Bridge and as a young lad, came out there with tears in my eyes. And I used to go to boarding school at the time and all the boys used to rib me Ipswich haven't won the FA Cup. Ha, ha, ha. Derby have won it. Charlton have won it. Poor little Ipswich haven't won it. I said, you wait and see. So three years later, there I was, 100,000 fans at Wembley. There's the original programme, which Brilliant. I'd like to donate to Life's a Pitch. Oh, fantastic. And uh, a few years later, I went with my son, who you may know, Asa. And um, we also had a fantastic time in Milan in 2001. And... Um, I'd like to donate that as well. Brilliant. Oh. Oh, Thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Thank you, Carl. We will look after those and, and treasure those. Um, that's what it's all about. It's the memories, isn't it? You know, when you, when you look back, the memorabilia, the memories and things for fans and players. Yes, and um, once or twice I have been told I should not live on my memories. Well, I have such fantastic memories as a very, very happy young child 
grandparents in the country and uh, lived a life up. I had a fantastic mother, father was in the army, and I've had such a fantastic job. And those memories will always stand in my mind. These are just two um, we keep in touch. I'm not as close as you two because a lot of them live further away, and I'm very upset to see some of the names that are coming through now. Uh, unable to attend Alzheimer's, former players, dementia. It's happening all over, but mm. fortunately uh, we keep in touch and uh, ha uh, I, I just, I live on my memories. And we want to hear more of them. Should we get back for a third time? Yeah. <laughs> for now, everybody, Pat Gobbles! Thank you. Thank you. He's one of our own. Pat Gobbles is one of our own. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. Brilliant. Well, we've got a bit more to do. Uh, it is time now for this week's Keepy Uppy Challenge, sponsored by Ginger Pickle. <laughs> So, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it up, challenge. I've got a wonky arm. Okay. <laughs> We're going to let you off. We're going to let you off. Uh, and uh, we will get it back uh, next week. But the leaderboard has been uh, amended. So uh, still at the top is James Gocroft. And Simon Milton last week got so very, very close. 74 we've given Milts yeah. on the leaderboard. We did want to check it out on the recording last week, but I don't know if you watched it last week. But just as he was doing the, the keep you up, it glitched. Uh, so we couldn't actually count. But we're going for 74, aren't we? Yeah, 74. Uh, so he's in second place at the so moment. This is, this is when you need VAR, really. It is, it? really, yeah. 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 That's worth a boo, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, it really does make a difference to us. And if you like T-shirts and mugs, all of those things, memorabilia, and uh, some events coming up soon as well to tell you about, uh, check out lifesapitch.tv, www.lifesapitch.tv. TV. Time now for the Town News in Brief, sponsored by John Keeble Cars of Bramford, with Phil Hamm from TWTD.co.uk. <laughs> He's found the hat. <laughs> he left the hat behind. <laughs> I should leave it behind another time. Yeah. Can you talk amongst yourselves? Because I've actually got to log into my laptop. <laughs> and if you know my technical abilities, it could take some time. I um, think the uh, the hat fits Phil better than you, Mark. I, I officially have got a big head. We'll have to get you a big hat then, won't we? No, I have got a big head. It is, I've got a large... Uh, a Leslie. A large one. <laughs> Leslie. What's going on? I've got... Floor manager, please. <laughs> <laughs> You've gone red, Leslie. Yes, <laughs> I've got a large mandible, apparently, according to my dentist. <laughs> and I actually, had a, I, had a, I actually had an MRI scan last week, and I've got a very healthy brain, according to my uh, consultant. I'm very pleased with you. Thank you. You wouldn't believe it if you hear me read things out, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Here is the Life to Pitch news. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mid midfielder Massimo Luongo has signed a new contract with the Blues, which runs to the summer of 2025, with the club having an option for a further year. The 31-year-old former Australian international who was previously on loan at the club in the early stages of 2012-13, has been a huge hit since joining town following a trial just over a year ago, quickly becoming a key man in the side which won promotion last year and has now climbed to second in the championship. Astonishingly, Luongo has only lost two of the 35 league matches that he's started since he joined the club more than a year ago, and both of those were to Leeds United. Now, Town are continuing their ongoing search for a striker with AFC Wimbledon's Ali Al Hamadi, the latest target in the frame. The 21-year-old is currently with his national side Iraq at the AFC Asian Cup in Qatar, but the Blues are hoping to tie up a deal before the window closes a week today, although with a fair way to go on the move as it stands, a fee of 1.5 million has previously been mooted for the six-foot-two-tall uh, Liverpool-raised striker. Um, you kind of think, boys, that we're our targets. We're going with our targets a little bit. Yes, Do you get that feeling? We're not at Marks and Spencers. We're shopping in Little now and all that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. So no, I, I, as soon as you said Wimbledon, I was like, nah, he can't be. You know, he can't be. You can't be shopping in that in that market. We've got to be looking elsewhere. But it's so difficult the January transfer. Well, we always knew it would be, didn't we? Otherwise, we it would otherwise be. you get another 
sort of youngster that comes along on loan and you don't know could that be hit or miss? Well, long-term target Jay Stansfield is now set to stay on loan with Birmingham from Fulham for the rest of the season. And TWTD.co.uk, he's got the plug-in, understands that there's been no progress on the move for Blackburn's Sam Gallagher. And it's reported that former town striker Kiefer Moore is now set to stay at AFC Bournemouth. Uh, so we'll watch that. Of course, uh, window closes, what, in a week's time, doesn't it? Yeah, it's still plenty of time. This, yeah. is, this is when all the action happens yep. in this last yep. week. Uh, meanwhile, of course, one striker has left Portman Road. Freddie Ladapo joined Charlton on loan for the rest of the season a week ago. So we wish him uh, all the very best. And that is the town news, everybody. There we go. Mm. So the hat comes off and the laptop is closed. Uh, let's have a look and see what's happened uh, to IT. How well did I do? Was that all right? <laughs> Okay. Uh, let's have a look at what's happened to ITFC on this day, brought to you in association with Fred Olsen Logistics. Well, Wednesday the 25th of January. I'm going back now to 1928. I'm sorry, there's something off-putting about that toy, but your picture on this page... <laughs> Welsh wizard Billy Reid had the distinction of being town's first player to be capped at international level. Born in Ronda, his exceptional dribbling prowess saw him christened the Stanley Matthews of the third division. He scored 46 times in 169 starts for the Blues before joining Swansea City. Also on the 25th of January... This time, a little bit more recent, 1958. Two goals from Bobby Charlton. The late Bobby Charlton saw Manchester United beat Ipswich 2-0 in an FA Cup fourth-round tie watched by 53,550 fans. That's amazing, isn't it? Sadly, it was the last time that the great Busby Babes were to play at Old Trafford as the Munich air disaster happened less than two weeks later. That was tragic. Then uh, moving on, Saturday the 25th again of January, uh, this time 1975. Here's one for you. Mick Mills scored the only goal as Liverpool was seen off 1-0 in the FA Cup. Yay! A record Portman Road attendance for the competition, 34,709. Watch Town's only domestic cup victory over the Reds to date. Just have a look at that. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it does say Mick Mill scored the only goal. I can't believe it. <laughs> <that. laughs> you, you thought I was making it up, didn't you? I thought you were making yeah, it up. Yeah, I yeah, thought you'd have the laugh. I thought, wow. Uh, George Burley and Mick Mills. George Burley, well, they're full-backs, aren't they? They never get forward, so there we are. These boys, eh, Pat? Get them under control. It's difficult. But uh, <laughs> you talk about the last match they play, Man United played at... Um, Old Trafford, and I didn't go to the match, but um, I did say to the manager, I, I wished I, I had been and seen Man United. He said, they're yeah. playing the Arsenal on Saturday. Would you like to go? And he got me a ticket, so I actually saw them playing their last match in the, England. The week before. The week before wow. they were they were killed. Mm. What a shame. You saw Duncan Edwards play. Yes, I did. Yeah, was he good? Yeah. Well, th what did they say was, uh, well, the best, wasn't he? And yeah. then Beatty, of course, they named him, you know, yeah. likened him to Duncan Edwards, but he was uh, fa 18, fantastic. Two great players. Yes, great player. Yeah. Well, super. I've seen quite a few, well, quite a lot of very, very good players. And only the other day I was looking and thinking, somebody's playing for Indonesia, what's his name, Baggett? Elton Baggett. Uh, Elton Baggett. And another chap here is Broad, Burgess with uh, whoever... And I said, oh, Australia. Australia, sorry. I said, I wish there was an England player. I remember I've got pictures, and obviously, four of Ipswich Town be um, Paul Mariner, Mick Mills, um, uh, Eric Gates, and all with the manager of England players. Colinville Joan, you two, I can name them. Yeah. Go on forever. Ev Even Gatesy. Even Gatesy. Even well, Gatesy, yes. yeah. Spoke to a funny little fellow he is. I rumour Gatesy when we, we got one of, his yeah. caps, one of his caps out in um, Romania and I roomed with him. So I had the bed and he had a cot at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's finish with this week's uh, Man V Fat News. 
Uh, and I'm afraid no Man v Fat Football last week due to frozen pitches. But can you let the viewers know? I sound like Benny Hill there. Hello, viewers. Uh, you have to be a certain age. Don't <laughs> Benny Hill <was. laughs> Thank you. Uh, we're hosting a seven-a-side tournament on Sunday at Gainsborough Sports Centre where spectators are welcome. The action kicks off at 10.30 with the final around 3.30 in the afternoon. A reminder that our leagues run at Portman Road on Friday evenings and Witten Sports Centre on a Monday. You can find us www.manvfatfootball.org forward slash uh, Ipswich. That's from Man V Fat Mark. Pat, it's been an absolute delight to have you on the show with us once more. We'll get you on again for Thank round you. three. Everybody, Pat, go on! Thank you. To keep in touch, much. check Thank out you. our Life's a Pitch uh, socials, Facebook, Insta and X on YouTube. Please like and subscribe the channel uh, and uh, we'd love you to do that for us if you do one thing. Thanks to our sponsors, our main sponsor, DPS Tech. We're also supported by All About Hearing, marketing company Ginger Pickle, Forward Floors, Come Here the Design, The Hudson Group, Sound4 Pro Audio, Fred Olsen Logistics, John Keeble Cars in Bramford, The Dove, in Ipswich, DPS Tech now sponsor the sofa for us as well. And also our new sponsors, Ashford Wright Limited. Uh, thank you, boys, very much. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you Capacity Crowd. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we'll see you next week. Up the town, everybody. Yeah.